Imagine a friendship so strained that it could end in a nightmare no one could ever anticipate. In the vibrant city of Montreal, two musicians, Raymond Henry Muller and Cedric Gagnon, found common ground in a shared passion for music. Their bond, forged in the crucible of creativity, led to the formation of a band they fittingly named Pirates. Their tunes echoed through the city streets, a testament to their camaraderie and shared dreams of reaching the pinnacle of the music industry. Yet, as the band's popularity grew, so did the tension between the two friends. The initial harmony that had marked their relationship began to fray, replaced by an undercurrent of discord that was as palpable as the bass notes of their songs. Their bond began to show signs of strain, arguments over creative differences became a regular occurrence. Muller, a fiery personality, clashed with Gagnon, whose laid-back demeanor did little to quell the growing tension. Their shared dream was slowly becoming a battleground, the music that once united them now a source of division. Close friends and bandmates watched helplessly as the rift widened, the pirates were sinking, and the crew was at odds. The strain was not just emotional, it spilled over into their performances their music losing its earlier charm. The discordant notes were a reflection of the disharmony that had taken root in their relationship. Behind the scenes the tension escalated, heated arguments turned into bitter fights the music studio transforming into a battleground. The duo's relationship, once marked by shared dreams and a love for music, had devolved into a ticking time bomb of resentment and animosity. Little did anyone know, this discord would soon turn deadly. A sudden silence fell over Montreal's music scene when Cédric Gagnon mysteriously vanished. Cédric Gagnon, a talented musician and a member of the band Pirates, was a vibrant presence, and his sudden absence sent shockwaves through the community. Friends and family initially chalked it up to a brief hiatus, perhaps a much-needed escape from the pressures of the music industry. But as the days turned into a week with no word from Cedric, anxiety began to gnaw at their hearts. The band especially felt the void left by Gagnon's absence. Cedric's partner in music Raymond Henry Muller, kept a stoic face but the strain was evident. They had recently been at odds their relationship strained by the stress of their creative process. Yet no one could fathom that this discord might have taken a darker turn. Meanwhile, the city of Montreal waited with bated breath for news of the missing musician. The authorities too were on high alert, scratching beneath the surface, looking for any signs that might point to Cedric's whereabouts. But nothing seemed out of the ordinary until some unsettling details began to surface. The last person to see Gagnon was none other than Mueller himself. The two had reportedly had a heated argument the night Cedric disappeared. More disturbingly, Mueller's behavior began to change drastically. He seemed aloof, nervous, and on edge. His once vibrant eyes now masked an unnerving coldness, a stark contrast to his usual jovial demeanor. As the days turned into weeks the band's rehearsals echoed with the haunting absence of Gagnon's bass guitar. Friends and family clung to the hope that Cedric would reappear, that he'd walk into the room with his infectious smile and put an end to the tormenting silence. But with each passing day, that hope began to fade. The music scene that once thrived on the harmony of pirates, was now shrouded in a chilling silence. The vibrant notes of Cedric's bass guitar seemed like a distant memory, leaving behind a haunting melody of despair and mystery. As the days turned into weeks, hope began to fade and a chilling realization set in. In a scene straight out of a horror movie, Muller was found in a bathtub, covered in blood, with a suicide note confessing to a horrific crime. This chilling reality marked the beginning of a gruesome twist in a tale as old as time, the dark side of fame. Muller, a musician himself, was found in a state of despair, his body marred by self-inflicted wounds. A suicide note filled with remorse and guilt was discovered nearby. It was a confession of a dreadful act that would shock the world. The note detailed a horrifying act of violence. Muller confessed to killing his fellow musician and bandmate, Cedric Gagnon, with a bass guitar. The brutality didn't end there. Muller admitted to dismembering Gagnon's body, discarding the remains in various garbage bins across Montreal. And all this happened in the very apartment where their music once resonated. Imagine the horror of the law enforcement officers, stepping into that apartment, a place that once echoed with melodies and harmonies, now echoing with the deafening silence of a life brutally ended. The police investigation was thorough and meticulous, revealing a chilling trail of evidence that corroborated Muller's confession. The investigators found traces of Gagnon's blood in the apartment and the bass guitar, the alleged murder weapon, bore signs of a violent struggle. The apartment, once a hub of creative energy, had turned into a gruesome crime scene. But the most disturbing evidence was found in the bathtub. 
It was here that Muller had attempted to end his life, but not before using it as a platform for his gruesome act. It was here that he, in his own words, had dismembered Gagnon's body. The music world was left reeling as one of their own was accused of an unthinkable crime. The harmony was broken, replaced by a chilling discord that would forever stain the legacy of the band called Pirates. It was a dark discovery indeed, one that would send ripples of shock and disbelief through the world of music and beyond. The stage was set for a trial that would send shockwaves through the city. Raymond Henry Muller, a musician with a dark secret, was in the spotlight. The courtroom buzzed with anticipation, everyone riveted by the gruesome tale unfolding before them. Muller was accused of a heinous crime, the murder of fellow band member Cedric Gagnon, committed with a chilling choice of weapon, a bass guitar. The prosecution faced an uphill battle, Gagnon's body was still missing, a critical piece of evidence that could not be presented to the jury. The absence of a body complicated matters, as it's often the most tangible proof of a crime. Yet, despite this, the prosecution presented a compelling case, supported by damning confessions from Muller himself. Muller's written and video confessions painted a grim picture, a chilling tale of how he allegedly dismembered Gagnon's body and disposed of the remains in garbage bins. The suicide attempt that followed and the discovery of Mueller in a bloodied bathtub only added to the macabre narrative. The jury was faced with a difficult task. They deliberated for nine long days requesting specific parts of Mueller's testimony and a map of Montreal for further insight into the case. Yet, despite the intense deliberations, they were unable to agree on a verdict. The first trial concluded without resolution, leaving a city in suspense and a justice system on tenorhooks. The question of Muller's guilt remained unanswered, a dark cloud hanging over the city. It was a shocking turn of events, a twist in the tale that left everyone wondering if justice would ever be served. Just when it seemed like justice might elude grasp, a second trial was called. In a courtroom filled with tension, the final act of this tragic symphony was about to play out. The second trial of Raymond Henry Muller, a tale woven with a macabre melody of murder, was underway. This was not the first time Muller had faced the jury. The first jury had been unable to reach a verdict, leaving the courtroom in an unsettling crescendo of uncertainty. But this time, the atmosphere was different. The air was thick with anticipation, the weight of justice hanging in the balance. The testimonies were damning painting a chilling portrait of the accused. A fellow musician, a once comrade in rhythm, now a key witness to Muller's downfall. His words echoed through the courtroom, a haunting reminder of the strained relationship that had existed between the two men. The Crown's theory too was a chilling composition. Muller was accused of murdering Cedric Gagnon with a bass guitar, dismembering the body, and discarding the remains in garbage bins. The jury listened, their faces a mask of concentration. They deliberated for nine long days, the tension in the room building with each passing hour. They sought a map of Montreal, a tangible piece of evidence to help piece together the grim jigsaw. They asked to listen again to specific parts of Muller's testimony, their ears straining to catch the discordant notes of guilt. But it was Muller's own words that proved to be his requiem. He had confessed in writing and on video to the murder. He had attempted suicide, leaving behind a note that admitted his guilt. The confession was a stark melody against the cacophony of the trial, a haunting solo that left no room for doubt. In the end, a chilling melody of justice echoed through the courtroom as Raymond Henry Muller was found guilty of first-degree murder, 